I'll be presenting a study that was conducted in Madagascar titled Production and Utilization of, Tradi of African Traditional Vegetables. And I'll be presenting um, on behalf of my partners, the team members. Um, a little bit about the, the project um, or the study, the project that the study is based on. We are currently implementing a project in Madagascar that is basically on enhancing the production and utilization of traditional African vegetables. And we are dealing with um, women farmers in this, in, this, uh, in this project, whereby we are trying to safeguard or to uh, to conserve the uh, traditional vegetables that are currently consumed or produced in, in Madagascar. And um, this study that is based on that project will cover the following outline, uh, the background, the methodology, uh, results and conclusion. And I took a moment to put together some pictures of the traditional African vegetables that I, I think some of you might not know and, and I know that they are consumed and uh, very common in Madagascar. From the left is the gallant soldier, the middle is the spider plant, and uh, the far right is the blackjack. So, as we might have heard in the previous presentations, we still, uh, there is a, a, a pronounced problem of malnutrition, a widespread malnutrition in uh, sub-Saharan countries. And in Madagascar, specifically, it's the same problem while we have uh, half of the children under age of five that are chronically malnourished, while at the same time 92% of Malagasy live on less than a US dollar, two US dollars a day. And uh, the problem is still big because 47% 47, um, 47 of um, children in Madagascar are stunting, have stunted growth, while 37% of uh, women in reproductive age are anemic. So, uh, studies, say, studies have it that um, traditional African vegetables can contribute to the alleviation of this prob problem of malnutrition and um, problems that are caused by, um, uh, that are not uh, diseases that are non-communicable like the, uh, diabetics and um, other non-communicable diseases. So, and also research suggests that there is a great potential for African traditional vegetables to, pro to promote resilience within African food systems and enhance food and nutrition security to a country, especially in sub-Saharan countries. So a study that was conducted, that, was, uh, that pre preceded the, the project, that was a scope study in World, uh, conducted by World Vegetable Center in 2018, revealed that Malagasy, or in Madagascar, there is still a diversity of traditional vegetables, a high diversity of traditional vegetables. But then these vegetables are often in a, in a danger of loss because of expansion of uh, gen generation as they, the old generation goes and the new generation comes. So uh, the traditional African vegetables are becoming, um, are becoming are not used because um, these young generations, in um, the young generations, are not uh, are not aware of the benefits of these traditional African vegetables. So, however, that despite the perceived benefits of uh, African traditional vegetables, they are used within Africa and especially in Madagascar is still not widely discussed or widely studied. So, this study was meant to contribute to the gap that is seen in Madagascar to contribute to the, to the, through assessing the production and utilization of African traditional vegetables in the island nation. Mm. Methodology. The study was conducted in um, the cycled areas, that is two regions in Madagascar, the Itasi and Ansirabe. These regions are, have major outlets or they're ne near to the uh, Antananarivo, which is the capital city of Madagascar. So 200 women were randomly selected from Itasi from, the, from two districts and 200 women were randomly selected from Ansirabe. 
And this study, uh, a structured questionnaire was administered to 400 randomly uh, sampled women, farmers, vegetable farmers, to collect data. Um, coming to the results. From the socioeconomics characteristics of the respondents, we see 85% um, of household heads were men. So this has implications on the vegetable production and marketing decisions. As we might have heard from the previous uh, discussions, that um, men and women often uh, depend in, 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 on each other, especially on household decisions. Now, when it comes to African traditional vegetables, most women have the, the role of collecting or making decisions on the collection and preparation of these African traditional vegetables. Most men in uh, sub-Saharan African countries or in developing countries are mostly involved in the high-value vegetables that, are, that fetch high-value market prices or, or crops that are, um, are high, of high value. But women dominate the African traditional vegetables or dominate <clears throat> the traditional vegetables value chain. 72% of Malagasy women are employed in uh, agriculture, mostly on smallholder farmers. Um, and on average, 0.16 acres were allocated for vegetable production per household. Um, in terms of allocation of land, first of all, land issue is very sensitive, especially to Malagasy women. Um, on, uh, the, they also have a very limited access to land um, in general, because study has it that um, uh, and, uh, land allocation for Malagasy people is uh, one acre where women cultivate uh, approximately half of uh, what men cultivate. And, and more than 80% of respondents were born and raised in their current communities. So that improved the chances of us getting more information on the indigenous traditional vegetables. The, on average, respondents that are women were 43 years. That was the average age. And uh, that shows that most of the uh, farmers were in the working age. 74% of household heads had primary level of education, while for the women could not complete primary education, but they could read and write. Most of them, that's 61%. So, um, so the respondents were asked to identify uh, some common traditional African vegetables, or African traditional vegetables that were cultivated or consumed in their areas. And these were some, some of the common that were mentioned. Um, uh, the sweet potato leaves, see, it sees that it fetches higher percentage, meaning that most of them are identified. This uh, sweet potato leaves as traditional vegetables that is mostly consumed and produced in their areas, followed by the African nightshade and um, the black jack that I showed you in the previous slides are the leaf amaranth and others that were mentioned, but not for by many, is like uh, the Ethiopian mustard, the jute mallow, and uh, the taro leaves. So about 25% of the cultivated vegetables spe uh, species are African traditional vegetables. And uncultivated indigenous food plants are mainly collected, were mainly collected from farmlands and open fields. These are the wild vegetables like the blackjack or the gallant soldier that uh, were not mainly cultivated, but uh, a, a person from the uh, house would just go in to the open farmlands and collect them for consumption. Yeah. This table presents some of the African traditional vegetables identified by their local names and uh, the most common names. So when asked, they identified these names. So um, we took uh, some time to search for the, for the common names and the, the, the scientific names of these vegetables. So this row shows the, the most lo common local names that they use for these vegetables. This is the, the scientific names. Uh, these are the common um, English names. And these are their status. So we see some of these vegetables, like the um, blackjack, is entirely wild. It's just collected and not cultivated. And uh, we have um, something like amaranth. It could be wild. They could just go and collect it from open fields, or they also uh, cultivated it. So uh, um, other, other, other most popular um, uh, uh, collected traditional African vegetables is the, the gallant soldier, which is mostly consumed in the places, in, in the study areas. And we see that most of these vegetables are consumed 
the parts of vegetables consumed are the leaves, most, for most of them, the leaves, except for the African eggplant, which is, uh, of course, the fruits are consumed, and also the um, amaranth, that uh, the grains could also be consumed. So, um, on, still on the utilization of African traditional vegetables, cultivated af traditional vegetables include amaranth, African nightshade, sweet potato leaves, pumpkin leaves, Ethiopian mustard, to mention a few. Uh, so more than 50% of respondents collected the wild TVs, like the blackjack and gallant soldier for self-consumption exclusively. So that is when they were asked uh, what was the motive for collection. So some of them, very few, identified that they could collect these uh, the wild vegetables just for sale. But most of them said they are collecting the wild vegetables exclusively for, for consumption. And 84% rated African nightshade as their most preferred crop to grow, among others. And the reasons that were that led to African nightshade to be the most preferred to grow among other African traditional vegetables is that it fished, it had a high market demand. Uh, its nature, the vigorous growth nature of, of the African nightshade, um, high ma uh, uh, early maturity, and also um, the test. And some of them, very few, said about the nutrition content of the African nightshade that led them to prefer growing it among other African traditional vegetables. Um, second most preferred African traditional vegetables, the sweet potato leaves, amaranth leaves, and the third was the African eggplant. Um, this, uh, the table shows the use of these vegetable, African traditional vegetable species. And we see um, when asked what are you using this, what are you utilizing this, or um, the, the, the African traditional vegetables, most of them said they are using them just for food, but very few identified some of the African traditional vegetables that are used for, um, also for animal field, feeds also, and also uh, medis for medicine. So we see among the wild vegetables, the blackjack and uh, the gallant soldier are not only used for food, but also for medicine. The gallant soldier is known as the, is known, in some places is known as a, as a weed, and it's mostly used as medicine to them. On the utilization, or uh, still on the utilization of African traditional vegetables, we see that um, most of what was uh, harvested for the cultivated African traditional vegetables was consumed at home, but it wasn't the case for all of the African traditional vegetables. Some of them, such as uh, African nightshade and the uh, sweet potato leaves, most of, uh, of what was uh, harvested was sold. So they also sold some of these African traditional vegetables, but a few of them, not most. Mm. On average, household members consumed 70 grams of vegetables per person per day. This was this is so low than compared to the to the recommendation of 240 grams per person per day, the, the FAO recommendation. But also, African traditional vegetables consumption per person per day was also very low. Um, on, on average, the African traditional vegetable consumption per person per week was 112 grams. So per day, it's very way more, less than what is presented. More than 50% of households consume African traditional vegetables at least three times a week when vegetables is abundant. So we see the consumption is still not much. It's very limited. So despite the notable frequency of consumption of the vegetables, household perceived vegetables to be less nutritious. This is um, perhaps is attributed to their lack of knowledge on the nutrition content or the, um, the importance of these African traditional vegetables. That is why a very small percent allocate, um, uh, said that they know that the African traditional vegetables are nutritious and they consume them for that. So most of the African traditional vegetables, such as the blackjack, amaranth, the African nightshade, sweet potato, were rated less nutritious vegetables. Marketing of the vegetables. The most preferred marketing um, channel was the to selling them on the retail uh, to the retailers. So you see, they just pick them from their, their their farmlands or their plots and sell them to the retailers. 
and this channel was uh, especially um, preferred because buyers in the retail paid immediately and uh, were close were close by so they were assured of this market if they sold to that to that channel other market channels like uh, including the collectors in the village wholesalers and consumers that's where they sold the african traditional vegetables and we see the average annual income from african eggplant nightshade and sweet potato leaves was just 20 usd for african eggplant 25 for nightshade and 16 for for sweet potato leaves this means they fetch they still fetch a very low income that's because it's not um it's not a venture that they have expanded on on the traditional african vegetables either to sell or consume so um most of the farmers when asked about the post harvest losses first they acknowledge not to receive any big cause most of these African traditional vegetables were just uh, collected or harvested and then sold at the same day, or they were collected when they were required to be collected by the, maybe their customers. So um, for those who are, especially for the African traditional vegetables, but for other types of exotic vegetables, there are some um, re remarkably amount of losses that were mentioned. So and uh, the post-harvest practices that they, they, they mostly had was, uh, First of all, they put their, their, their harvested vegetables in baskets right after, right after, um, right after mm -hmm. harvest. And to prevent spoilage, most of them harvest during, during cool hours. And um, on the average life of the leafy, especially the leafy African traditional vegetables was one day. And that is if they sprinkle water on them. So when asked about the challenges that they encountered in uh, production of these African vegetables, those that product, produce the cultivated ones, most of them identified pests and diseases. That is still widely uh, pronounced among the, 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 the women in the study area. Also, the second was they had no input, no money to buy inputs. Um, and um, the third was shortage of water for irrigation in some areas and also low market prices, weeds, but also lack of lack of land. As I said, it's a very it's a very uh, pronounced problem in, in Madagascar, especially access to land, especially to women, women uh, farmers. Um, in conclusion, despite the ability to grow under different weather conditions with uh, high yields. The production and consumption of African traditional vegetables is still very low in the study areas. And there is a great potential for identified and utilized African traditional vegetables to play a major role in more diversified and sustainable food production systems. And uh, as, we, as the director has mentioned yesterday, we don't have just to remain saying that there is a great potential for African traditional vegetables to to enhance to be um, when enhanced to help in, in nutrition security food and income security to smallholder households we, there is a need for us, uh, all of us to actually go to to work to actually bring that um, on our plates especially to to enhance the nutrition security and food security and also to to encourage the production of these vegetables for income for enhancing income especially to the smallholder farmers so with proper extension and credit uh, services, improved seed supply sources and reliable market, vegetable farmers will be able to harness the potentials of African traditional vegetables for food security, improved health, and increased income. Um, furthermore, the indigenous plants should be studied extensively and comprehensively and included more often as mainstream foods in the African societies. So this marks the end of, the end of my presentation. And I would like to take time to acknowledge our funders, the funders of the projects that I initially introduced, which are the Darwin Initiative, and the project partners, uh, that is the University of Antananarivo in Madagascar, the World Vegetable Center, and uh, the Center for Agricultural Research, Research and Rural Development, that is for FIFA in Madagascar. Thank you all for listening. These are the, my contacts in case you, you want to reach me. All right, give a hand. Any question from the audience? One, just one, we'll take one. 
Thank you very much, Rita, for your presentation. Uh, I just have one question. Uh, during your presentation, you've mentioned that when you asked the farmers about uh, post-harvest losses in uh, African traditional vegetables, they said that they normally harvest when, when the vegetable is required. But from my, from my knowledge on uh, most of African traditional vegetables, we understand that they have a very short reproductive, sorry, vegetative phase of growth. Then uh, what, what was the reason? What were the farmers doing to ensure that uh, for that vegetative uh, phase of growth is extended in such a way that when the consumers want or the traders want them, they are able to get them at the quality that is required? Yeah. Should I address that? Okay. Thank you for your question. You know, these African traditional vegetables to Malagasy farmers were not extensively produced. First of all, the, pl the plots that they reported in the, the previous season that they had cultivated the African traditional vegetables were really small. So it was very well understood if they, they, they reported that uh, they sold when the customer Came. maybe uh, because the plots first were very small and then they didn't produce, most of them didn't produce to sell, they produced to consume. Yeah. So uh, on the vegetative phase, I'm sure it wasn't that much long that they needed to harvest for a long time to, to make sure that uh, they don't turn into seeds in, in, in the plots. Yeah. Thank you.